from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And here we are bailing out everybody and their brother. Now, the auto industry. We bailed out the insurance companies. We bailed out the banks. Now we're going to bail out the insurance industry. Sorry, the auto industry. And um, a poll published in USA Today said that 47% of American adults believe providing loans and other help to auto companies is not very important. I agree with them. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Julie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. It's so it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank I've you. been listening for you for the longest. First time caller, long time listener. Cool. Um, the reason I was calling is because oh gosh, it's so uh, oh gosh, it just gets me upset every time I hear the bailout of seven billion dollars. We are the ones paying for that money, which makes it unfair. For people like us that have good credit, perfect credit, actually, my husband and I have been trying to buy a house for the longest, and for idiotic people like this, we can't. We, you know, how come people, uh, you know, stupid people that have made um, the bad decisions of getting into something that they can't afford, you know, how come we're paying for that? How come the government doesn't say, you know, you have been a good human person, you have had, you know, a good credit, uh, never bankrupt, never do anything stupid, and then how come they don't they don't say okay here is a little a little hundred dollars for being for being good? Yeah, well, uh, uh, here's what they're gonna do uh, to keep you quiet and others like you. They'll they'll send you another little check for three or four or five hundred dollars. Tell you to go spend it. No, but you, you see what I mean? I mean, people that, we, you know, people like you and I and many of Americans, yeah. you know, excluding the ones that have messed up with the system, we have done the right thing. And here we are, you know, um, we're to, we've been, like I said, we've been trying to buy a house for the longest. And my husband has a good income. I have a good income. And we still so, can, can buy a house, can afford to buy a house. You know, oh, I know. Hard for us. Well, how many people yeah. like you? Uh, like, you're like me. You know, I I wanted to buy a vacation house, and I, you know, I could afford to buy a vacation house, but um, it doesn't matter if I could afford it. Um, I did not want to pay the outrageously inflated prices for houses exactly. uh, that that existed when mortgage rates were so low after nine eleven. And so I waited, and I saved money to have a big down payment all these years. You know, okay. And finally this year, when the real estate market started to fall off a cliff, that's when I stepped in and said, guess what? I can afford to put 25% down on this house. And uh, no one else is going to come in here and make an offer like this. And so I bought now, but I the, the last five summers, I could have been at a vacation home. Right. But I did the responsible thing, and rather than uh, uh, putting 5% down or no money down or whatever, I waited and saved my money. And the result is that now that I've done that, I am going to have to pay to bail out insurance companies and banks and to bail out all the homeowners who caused the price of houses to go up in the first place. Exactly, exactly. So you do not get rewarded for doing the right thing, you get punished. Well, we are all getting punished for those people. That's right. Because of those people. You know, and now they're getting away with everything. I mean, what? They, you know, some of, oh gosh, only if I, if I told you. I mean, I've known people that have filed for bankruptcy and, and they get away with it. I you know. know, they just, and they just kept a few cards and they keep getting into debt. So when is this going to stop? Yeah. It's, ridiculous, it's gonna stop when we go completely broke as a country. That's what it's gonna stop, unfortunately. And who's gonna bail us out? Nobody. Thank you, Julie. It's Donnie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Tom? Doing great. All right. I just want to say that I've never heard it put like you put it, and uh, I agree with you. And I want to know what your opinion is. What What should we do? How can we protect these jobs? In well, your opinion, I'm saying that some of these jobs can't be protected. If If people are making products that nobody wants. Like, for example, big gas guzzling vehicles. Right. Then uh, why should people have a job making products nobody wants to buy? 
that's true. That's true. Here's another example. I remember reading a story about the Postal Service. And all these people were wringing their hands over the fact that people are now using email instead of the Postal Service to send letters or to send bills. People are paying their bills online. And the result is that there are so many less letters, and they may have to lay people off at the Postal Service. And my response to that is, right on. Hallelujah. That's exactly right. There is no need to, to lick an envelope, put a stamp on something, walk out to the mailbox, drop it in, wait two days for it to arrive, or four days or six days. There's That's no right. need to That's do right. it anymore. Why would it be such a tragedy if we went and told people, you know what, we don't need as many people at the Postal Service? Why would that be so bad? Because the Postal Service is nothing more than welfare in disguise. That's what it is. <laughs> That's right, man. Giving people work to do that isn't needed to be done. Uh, you know, we didn't bail out the ice man when Frigidaire came along and made a refrigerator. We didn't bail out the milkman when, uh, you know, Ralph's came along and started just selling milk in the supermarket. Right. Uh, we didn't bail out the Pony Express driver when the post office came along. So it's, it's just a tragedy, and that's it. And that's, that's it. very clear to me. It's the that way, it's the nature of the beast. So do you think that um, new jobs will be created? New energy, new things that we can use. All these jobs, it recycles itself, don't it, Tom? Well, I, I, one would hope. I mean, that's what has always happened. I mean, we're making products we never made uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. iPods, smartphones, uh, you know, various kinds of computers and peripherals. Uh, we have all kinds of services that never existed before. Man, that is so true. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, like, as I've said, ever watch an old episode of The Honeymooners with Jackie Gleason and they had an ice box? Oh, yeah. And the ice box yeah. was nothing more than a, you know, like a big fan and a block of ice in there blowing the air around. And then <laughs> somebody came along with a refrigerator. <laughs> now, did we really, did we ever say we have to bail out the ice man? What's the ice man going to do? Well, I guess it's just so many people now. It's so many people that it's affecting now that it's getting so much attention. It's and always existed. You know what? People have to be flexible. They have to be prepared to train for new technologies that are coming along. They need new skills. That this is why I'm always telling these morons who call in. What are you? Why are you not in college? Why are you not <laughs> studying? Why? Why are you dropping out to bone your girlfriend when in reality, you need to be prepared for the changes that are coming. That's right. Real life. Right. Right, right. Now, I believe a big problem with that is people's parents didn't teach them the right way because their parents wouldn't talk the right way because their parents wouldn't talk the right way. Well, I think you're exactly right about that. Jeff on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Tom, privilege to talk to you, sir. It is indeed. Yes, I know. Hey, what would happen if these big three automakers went out to the military vehicles that they produce? Would the government buy just those lines and specifically? I don't know what you mean. Well, the military it buys a lot of Hummers and Jeeps and things like that. So if they go out of business, uh, who would provide those vehicles? Well, yeah, guess what? Maybe the military should buy Hummer and produce their own vehicles. Yeah, would they perhaps would, you know, become a government entity then? Maybe they should. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Tom. Let it self-correct. That's it. Take me out John Denver style. I'm done. Oh, John Denver style. We haven't had a request for that one in a while. Do we still have John Denver style there? We certainly do. Here you go. Kobe, tell me. No, that. Good job, that one. There it is. John Denver style. Oh, yeah. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Here comes Wayne on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I'm glad you're talking about this. I am totally against the bailout. I don't see anybody bailing me out for anything I've ever put under uh, credit. I don't see why they should be rewarded. What are we going to do next? Reward criminals for committing acts? Give them money so they don't commit more acts? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think ultimately what we have is a problem from the fiscal point of view. These, these publicly traded stocks, they have a financial responsibility or f fiscal responsibility to make as much money as possible for their shareholders in the shortest period of time. And I think what we need to do is to somehow figure out a way to change the laws so it's more about economic stability for the country. I think we should be more worried about the country than any individual company. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and it has to go across everything, you know. What's going on with the bond market? You don't hear a whole lot about that. That's kind of the, 
You know, China's not buying our bonds like they used to. Who knows if they'll ever return to doing that. And that's kind of the underlying area where you get our money for, for the government to make big loans to everybody else, isn't it? Well, uh, and the printing press. Never forget that when we're short on money, we just uh, print more dollars. Uh, that's why over most of the last six years, uh, the dollar has been in the crapper. And I don't see any quick fixes. I think people are looking for quick fixes. I think we need pain and suffering to realize it and to learn. I, I think these companies like GM have to suffer through whatever they're going to go through. And nobody knows what could happen. You know, people think they'll be gone forever. That could happen, but they could get smarter handle things differently, go through the bankruptcy, come out a leaner, meaner machine, or maybe get bought out by somebody who's smarter and does it better. Absolutely right, Wayne. I couldn't have said it better myself. Tom, Tom, Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Now we have the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. We take more calls faster. That's our deal. It's one 800 800 tom Matthew, hello. Hello, Tom. Thank you very much for taking my call. Sure. I uh, have been a loyal, religious listener since I first heard you about eight and a half months ago. I even do the tasting room. I uh, really, really appreciate your show, and I believe uh, you are the best representation of radio out there right now. Thank you. And uh, to show that I've actually been listening to everything you say on your show... Um, I've actually waited to call about this subject because no one's brought up, you know, when uh, you speak about telling people, you know, I hope you, that you keep having kids. I hope that you still keep, you know, dropping out of high school because I need people to mow my lawn. I need people to change my oil. No one's brought up the fact that, you know, America, we're not doing too hot right now. And to pull ourselves out of this, you know, as Americans, we have to pull together. Are these people in our community willing to do that. I mean, these are people that have grown up with video games, all sorts of stuff. You know, when I grew up, we basically had dough and sticks, Tinker Toy and Play-Doh. You know, so you kind of had to, you know, use your mind to be, you know, somewhat productive. But I don't know, what do you think about all these uneducated, you know, dingbats that are out having kids out of wedlock, you know, not graduating high school, for God's sake. I mean... These are the people we're going to depend on to pull us out of this. I think you're going to see the 995 oil change real soon. Well, not just that, but it just it really scares me. I mean, about this whole depression thing, I've been thinking about this for five to six years. I've been telling everyone at work. And I said, hey, look, it's going to happen. Everyone keeps laughing at me. And I keep telling them, look, look at the people. Look at the quality of people that we have in this country right now. And it's not too hot. Well, don't, you know, don't be mistaken. I mean, we still, we still, let's face it, we highlight the stupid and we celebrate them, uh, including on this program over the years. But by and large, we still have one of the most educated populaces on planet Earth. I, yeah, I understand that. I just, I mean, I guess maybe I'm focusing too much on the education. I'm talking about people getting, you know, intestinal fortitude and going, all right, you know, we're going to have to buckle down. I mean, you know, I grew up in the 70s, so... Well, this is how you learn. I mean, the reason the people who grew up during the Depression, like my, you know, my grandfather and others, uh, the, the reason those people were so uh, uh, different in terms of, uh, you know, how they saved and invested and planned for the future yeah. is because they went through the, the Depression. They learned the hard way. Oh, yeah. And, I, I and then the only... that was followed up by the sacrifices of World War II where they had to uh, ration gasoline, ration yeah. meat. Uh, they have had to live with limitations. I mean, and now, for the last 65 years in this country, pretty much it's been open season. You can have as much of what you want. Uh, you exactly. can get it anywhere. You can get it, in, uh, which is, by the way, how great a country is this? A 99-cent double cheeseburger? Does it get exactly. any better than that? People are used to getting what they want, where they want. It's like the uh, phrase at Coca-Cola. Corporately, they use the phrase, they want a Coke within arm's reach. We have everything within arm's reach. Yes. Everything. Yes. And... You know, growing up, I mean, in first grade, I was probably the only kid, you know, because I had relatives here that were farmers that lived through the Depression and other relatives that came over from Italy. And I was able to speak about Ellis Island and the Depression. And to this day, everyone in my family that were farmers and went through the Depression will not leave a lick of food on their plate. 
And that stuck in my mind growing up as a child. And I'm just very worried these people today, I mean, you know, I mean, you grew up, you, you know, in the South Bronx, you know, when you grew up poor, you were poor. Nowadays, you know, I live in Echo Park. I see a lot of poor families. They live in apartments, but they have the SUV. They have the flat screen. They have the Xbox. You know, when I grew up, you were poor. You didn't have that. You had one pair of pants to go to school. Right. Well, people are going to learn now. There's no doubt about it. They're going to learn now. 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's Tyler on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. I just wanted to make the point uh, about the difference between bailing the banks out and the automakers out. Um, the automakers can't meet the market demand, and if we bail them out at this point, unless they can completely restructure their companies, we're going to need to rebail them out in five years, ten years from now. At, at what point is it going to stop? Um, the banks, on the other hand, work with revolving lines of credit. They're loaning out money. If they can become solvent again, they're going to be able to continue their operations and continue with businesses. So building out a company that can't meet market demand is a lot different than building out a company out that just has to weather a rough spot and will be able to work through it. Yeah, well, I understand what you're saying. But I also believe that, uh, that uh, you know, if, if banks are weak, if banks make bad loans, they should be uh, gobbled up by the banks that have been responsible. I completely agree with you, but I think it's also an issue of uh, corporate CEOs and CFOs. I mean, they're not stupid people. They knew that they weren't accurately accounting for losses and taking into account the losses that they were going to take in the future on these loans that they were giving out. Um, you're talking Starbine's Oxley violations. I mean, they should be held criminally, criminally liable for these situations they put themselves in. Their whole intention was, you know, make my $100 million, get out, and let this problem rest on everyone else who comes in after me. Yeah, well, don't, it, don't hold your breath on that, by the way. Uh, I'm not, but, I mean, realistically, we should be piercing the corporate veil going after the directors of these companies who put the American economy in this type of situation. Yeah, you make some good points, Tyler. I thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, the point I have is I think a lot of people are misunderstanding uh, like when we talk about these bailouts, like exactly what you were saying, where the money's coming from, they don't understand the actual effects that we're having. And I think it's, the problem is, is because people don't understand how our monetary system and how it works and how, how, why we are where we are today. I mean, because of the fact that we had a, a huge bubble created by the money supply. Um, and if people actually knew where the money supply was now, they'd probably be pretty scared about where we're we heading to in the next 12 months. Well, I think you're probably right about that, but by the same token, uh, let's face it, unemployment's going up. Unemployment's going up because companies are going out of business. Companies are going out of business because not only the economy, but many companies have made a lot of bad decisions, bad choices, and taken a lot of bad risks over the years. Uh, companies that have taken bad risks, companies that have uh, overextended themselves or uh, sold products to deadbeats, uh, they should be allowed to go out of business. I don't see why we should support companies that have done that. Right. But a lot of those companies that did that were all supported by the, art, the you know, the, the uh, increase in the money supply. Because if they didn't have this crazy, crazy, uh, you know, increase, just like the roaring 20s that we had, we wouldn't be in the situation that we are in today. Like, for example, the real estate, the real estate market, you kept saying it like a year ago. And I was like, yeah, right on. Tom's saying it. It's going to crash. And people are like, oh, I'll wait five years. It's like, hey, you don't understand why the price went up. So how can you understand why it's not going to continue to go down? Yeah, remember when I was telling people not to buy real estate? You know, I spoke um, I spoke at a um, a seminar uh, that was sponsored by the radio station, and uh, there were all these people appearing there, and they were all talking about real estate, and a number of people were there to to help you buy real estate with no money down or whatever. Uh, who are the people who are normally at seminars? And uh, I stepped up to the microphone, and I announced this is a very bad time to buy real estate. And if I were you, I'd wait till there's blood in the streets. And there were people looking at me, like, with contempt. That's not what they wanted to hear. Yeah. But, but it was the truth. What I said was the truth. If you paid to hear me speak that day, you heard me tell the truth, the truth that has come home to roost. And it will continue to decline. It and and the continue. reason I have not spoken at a financial seminar since, I believe, is because not only did I tell the truth, but I, I would be willing to bet that many of the people who were there selling their goods and services, my guess is that they're having a bit of a hard time right now, if not a big hard time. Yep, no no 100% financing anymore, and that's going back any time soon. 
So well, you know, this idea of telling people to go out and buy five that, houses like say, and like, flip I, them. I, I, that's a lot because it's going to be a rough, rough ride. Right. Uh, I know it's going to be rough for me as well, but uh, especially I am a real estate broker. I told you what years ago. Um, I sell properties for banks now, so it's not like I have a. Well, we're losing the uh, connection there, David, but I understand what you're saying. I thank you for the call. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. The question posed to respondents to the Gallup poll, should we bail out the auto industry? 47% of Americans say, no, not important to do that. What do you think? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Sebastian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, thanks for taking my Tom call. I've been listening to you ever since you used to pass Turkey Neck down the halls of you know where. Oh, there you go. Yeah, anyway, I'm 22. I'm well-read. I'm wanting financial freedom. You know, I'm a college graduate. All I see is a mountain of aging baby boomers getting ready to suck my prime financial earning years away from me to keep their own selfish butt to float down the line by bailouts and irresponsible uh, practices. I'm bailing as soon as I get my MD. As soon as I finish med school, I'm out of this country, going someplace where they don't, they're not going to tax me to death. And all I see is what? 12, 15 years of incredible hardship in this country when all these baby boomers start sucking on the so- in the air. Yeah! Yes. It's the zero tolerance policy. I mean, I understand you're using it in, in even more benign than a clinical sense, but unfortunately, that's one of the seven words that are specifically outlawed that you can't say. If you go to, uh, our MySpace, it's myspace.com slash Tom Likas, uh, go to our list. The entire list is there on my blog. You just go to myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Doing okay. <laughs> well, my name is Michael. 22. I work in Orange County, Irvine. And I work for a foreclosure firm called Land America Default Services. Um, they're probably a number three leading title company in America. Well, last Friday, we all came into our office getting an email notification that we were being bought out by a, another big firm title company called Fidelity National Title. I'm sure a lot of people know about. So it's pretty nerve-wracking thinking that I'm in a comfortable position being in the foreclosure industry, but my my company also did the lending side, and that's where most of their fault came from, and they lost a lot of money, and we are now going under, and now I'm one of the people having to be, you know, listening to all the people that are getting laid off, about to be laid off for a couple of months. Wow. How do you feel about that? Um pretty scary. I you know I thought I was I thought it was safe, honestly. I thought it wouldn't I thought it wouldn't affect me knowing that where I was and how good of a position I had. Well if less and, people are buying houses, don't less people need title insurance or uh title uh, uh research done that kind of thing? It's, it's very true. It's caught up to us and um I guess now what the industry is going towards is loss mitigation, which is to help people get out of foreclosure. So you're going to see a big decline in foreclosures and evictions coming up soon. And I think now the market is going to be towards focusing on loan modifications and forbearance agreements. Yep, I'm sure that's true. Maybe that's the business you go to next. That, that is definitely the business. So I'm in the process of updating my resume and getting it ready because um, start, I think February is when the completion date of this merger happens. And I'm pretty sure everyone's going to tell be told to pack up and ship out. Well, <laughs> you want to stay one step ahead of all of that stuff. Jose on the top like his show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, man, I work for the soda industry, and when you said earlier about Coke, uh, dude, those guys are in the crapper just like fancy. I swear to you, this year, I'm, I, I haven't had a worse year since I started at 7 out there. Uh, my first year, within four months, I cranked out 11 Gs. I was just happier than, uh, I was happy as, uh, you know, as, as you can be, and, uh, Last year, I cranked 33. I was like, wow, I'm making more cash in my pens. This year, I'm crashing at 27. I'm just, 
Now, what is your what is your wait 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 what is your salary based on? Oh, basically, it's, it's fairly hour. I mean, uh, the union is uh, the, that I work for is as a uh, negotiator, uh, what, uh, whatever they negotiated for, and I mean, my top pay is there. But what's making me more afraid is that you know. I but you're making less money because you're getting less overtime. Why are you making less? No, that's it. I mean, there's less overtime. I mean, people are not buying sodas as they used to. I mean, uh. I mean, these companies now, like Taylor Brothers and uh, Ralph, they're starting to just, you know, almost in a sense, give them away. I mean, they're trying to get people to buy these uh, these sodas, and it's not really good. It's not really happening, dude. I mean, I just spent uh, an hour at Ralph's that should have taken me uh, almost hours before, and I mean, it's uh, I'm 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 blown away, dude. I mean, these Pepsi just let go of at least uh, a good buddies of mine, um, like ten people in the past uh, the past few few months, and. I'm just like surprised as to where they're, they're going to go next. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, my recommendation, by the way, to people who say I hate my job or I'm going to look for another job, I, I know you're not one of them. I'm just saying for people who are saying that. Uh, I would say delay any decisions you're going to make for now. Defer that to the future. Keep grinding away. If you've got a job and you're not the, you're being threatened with layoffs, stay there. Stay there. Right on, Tom. Preach the truth, brother. Take me out of the screaming orgasm and I get out there, please. Here you go. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Gracias. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ross on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, I've been listening for a long time. Uh, don't agree with everything you say. But um, those three big companies don't deserve a bailout. I have my own company. Do I deserve a bailout? Are they going to come to my aid when I when I lose my house, when I lose my family? What are they going to do for me? Nothing, right? That that's true for just about everybody out there. Yeah, yeah. So so why bail out for GM and Chrysler? Well, as I said, uh, there are people out there who bought cars. People yeah. out there who bought cars who can't afford to make the payments. And, and, the, re and the, repo the, man, the repo the man, the repo man, no, 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 no. We'll get to that in a second. I'm making a point here. Uh, the repo man is coming, the repo man listening to this show right now, going out there with their tow trucks and their crowbars and their, uh, their I, chains. I, I used to do it. And they are to. taking cars away from people who can't make payments. Then the car companies that manufacture the cars, they're saying, we can't make our payments to our suppliers. We need a bailout. So hey, wait a minute, pal. If you want a bailout, how can you be taking away the, the, the cars of people who can't make payments themselves? Well, I mean, that's their own problem. Well, but right? the, my point is, if you're going to bail out the car companies, it has to be with a string attached. And the string attached has to say, well, if we bail you out, you're going to bail the car bail the car owner out. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But we're not doing that. No, they're not they're not doing anything for for the regular America. I'm really trying to not cuss on your show. I'm I'm really trying. Well, that that's um, a good idea, Ross. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's hey, going on? Not much. You know, I heard something on the news this morning. They're going to help out these homeowners who are about to get foreclosed on. That they shouldn't do that. No way. These people bid off more than they can chew. They should go down with the, uh, stick I, with the I ship. Don't, yeah, I don't mind if the financial institutions help them out. That's fine. That's but fine. I, don't, I don't want the federal government helping them out. No, because they're going to use our money to do it. Well, not only are they using our money, these are the sons of bitches who drove up the cost of housing in the first place by bidding it up to way more than it was worth or by buying houses and trying to flip them. These are the people who deserve to be punished. Exactly. I, I don't. Exactly. I don't want to be paying to bail them out. No, my kids are going to pay for it down the, in the future. I'll bail What's you out that house you bought for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I'll take it for four hundred and twenty nine thousand. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. All right, Tom. Have a good day, John. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Okay. 
Um, I was wondering, the, uh, you said there was 47% of Americans who were in favor of the bailout, correct? No. I said that according to a Gallup poll in USA Today, 47% of adults... Oh, uh, believe that providing loans and other help to auto companies is not very important. Yes, I agree with them. Um, I was wondering who is the uh, 53% who is, or the 52% or 53 that is okay with this? Cause they're well, keep in mind, that have... doesn't, that, that's just the people who said not very important. I, I have to imagine, and they did not show the, the, the details of the poll here, uh, I have to imagine that the answers were very important, important, Oh, I see. No opinion, um, not important, not very important. Like, they probably had five choices. I see. And I'm sure you said this about a thousand times, but, like, if we're bailing people out every day, we're just eventually going to throw ourselves in this big pit where everyone's just going to be doing nothing. Does America realize this? Or Well, what's going to happen eventually is that uh, 10 or 15% of Americans are going to be bailing out the other 85, 90%. Yeah. And I work in the retail industry, so but I work for Costco, so uh, we're doing pretty well in our stocks right now. I you know look about that often, so uh, I'm not too stressed about it right now. But it's going to come down to you know the the very end of the string here, and you know what are people like myself because people need to eat, so I feel pretty good about that. But it's just people don't realize that they just don't live life to the full. Well, they do live life way over the full top of it, of the brim, but. I think people just need to, whatever change Obama's going to give us, which I'm in favor of, I think they need to not resist it. People, what, you, what you resist persists, you know? Oh, I think uh, I think you're right about that. I think uh, we need to let things happen uh, much more naturally, uh, take their own course. That yes. means some companies have to go out of business. That means some and people I, have to lose their jobs. And I also believe that when people have business, I know a friend who owns a business, and when you own a business, it's all. It's either you get all you get money or you don't. And I feel that if your business was under, it's too bad. You need to you know move out of the way. Let someone else be an entrepreneur. I think you're right. Well, thank you, Tom. I got what I wanted to hear, and uh, let's been listening to you for a while. And uh, I love what you say. I never agree with anyone more than you. <laughs> John, thank you for that. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likes Show. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas. Look at this story from CNN. It says here a key Democratic lawmaker has called for the resignation of American International Group, that's AIG's CEO, after the troubled insurer held a financial planners conference last week at a posh Arizona resort. This is what you're bailing out. The company responded that the event cost AIG very little and was aimed at boosting income. AIG had come under sharp criticism for sending executives on a lavish English partridge hunt and a week-long retreat at a California resort after accepting an $85 billion bailout since grown to $150 billion from the federal government in September. Representative Elijah Cummings, Democrat of Maryland, said these guys, they just don't get it. They came to us basically saying we were on the critical list, we need a respirator, and we bail them out. And the next thing we know, we turn around and they're going out partying and spending the taxpayers' dollars. And it's kind of, it's very upsetting. Amazing. Spokesperson for AIG, Nicholas, Nicholas, Ashujish. See that name, Gary? Nicholas, Nicholas Ashush, no, Nicholas Ashu, A S H O O H, suffering succotash. And he's the spokesman. He's the spokesman for AIG. He says, I can understand why the congressman would, would be upset. But I think he's responding to an incomplete picture. This was a, a legit meeting. It was really for independent advisors. A very little cost to AIG. Yes. And it goes on and on. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you so much. <laughs> What's up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Oh man, I'm calling. To, I'm calling to, t- to let you know how bad it's getting at the warehouses, man. Like I'm a part timer, and uh, I'm scheduled 25 hours, but I would easily get 35, 40 hours before this before this crisis came out. And, and now that it's coming out, I mean, it's hard. It's even hard to get 27 hours. Wow. Yeah, they're sending people home like crazy. They're cutting hours. I mean, nobody can stay. I mean, luckily I have some friends that that are willing to go home early in order for me to get extra money. Uh, well, uh, so what are you doing to Moonlight now? Uh, I went on AOL and Yahoo and to look for jobs. So I kind of filled out some applications here and there because I'm also going to school. So I can't, I can't, uh, can't stay away from that. Wow. Unbelievable. Yep. You got any advice for me? Well, Chris, everyone's asking the same question. My yeah. advice, you're 20 years old. Let me ask you a question, Chris. Why aren't you in college? I, uh, I'm going to community college. I know it's like 13th grade, but, you know, I'm, I also got a, I also have uh, some payments to pay off. I bought this car and I need to pay it off. And uh, I'm going to school. I don't want to let that go. I'm, uh, and I'm also, I also have to work. Wow. Yeah. Well, my recommendation is get as much training, as much education as you can get. I mean, if that wasn't clear a year ago when I was saying to people they need to do that, it's got to be clearer now. All right. All right. That, that's my best advice to you. Thanks for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Jimmy on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jimmy. Long time, first time. Thank you so much. No bailout for these corporations, man. Uh, I'm self-employed, 27 years old, self-employed. Got a pretty lucrative business. It's actually a luxury, not a necessity. It's the racing industry. Uh, pretty much a one-man crew. When I slow down, there's nobody here helping me with money, you know? I know. So what's the difference with these corporations, man? I'm going to be here till 10 o'clock tonight trying to pay some bills, you know? And uh, luckily, after the elections, uh, business picked up again a little bit, but... Uh, in the meantime, when we slow down and there's no money in the bank to pay the bills, who's bailing me out, you know? Well, that's that's a very good question. So, but anyway. again, being responsible. Uh, you, you, there's no reward for being responsible. Exactly. Those of us who are responsible, those of us with good credit uh, ratings, those of us with no debt, those of us who pay our bills, those of us who save and plan, and we just don't go out spending like drunken sailors, there's, there's no reward for us. Exactly. We are the ones who will have to bail out the deadbeats, the slime balls, and the stiffs. Yep. That's the way I feel, Tom. And, and uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know how taxes are going to go with, um, you know, like all this welfare reform and all that stuff. I, I get tired of seeing all these girls on welfare. They can be working and, you know... My tax dollars go to that, you know? Yeah. And I work very hard for my money. Well, so, do, like so do many of us, let me tell you. Yeah. If you think sitting here slaving over a hot phone is easy, come try it sometime. <laughs> you know, I'm sure it's hard, Tom. I'm sure it's hard. Blow me up, Tom. Thank you very much. There you go, baby. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Zach on the Tom Like Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Good. Uh, I'm, uh, just, I just, I think it's a bad, it's a bad idea to bail out the uh, automotive industry. I think that they're pretty, uh, they've not been very humanitarian, uh, or ecologically friendly or, uh, apt in the past. i I just moved here to LA from Chicago where they have, you know, a great transit system. And I, this is just what I heard. I was asking people why, with so many people living in LA, they, isn't there a better, transit system and the answer i've been receiving from people is that the auto industry put a nix on it like way back in the day uh and that just doesn't that you know <laughs> that just seems kind of funny to me to be that kind of money mongering company and then uh to trust them with uh with uh, bailout money i just, just doesn't sit well with me yeah, I understand that, and, uh, you know, I, I gotta tell you, it, the whole thing is, um, pissing me off, really. It, it's pissing me off. Uh, cause, again, those of us who've been responsible will have to bail out those who haven't. Right. 
Uh, I mean, I, I don't, also, like, what, what's the, I mean, I could understand, I could understand going for, uh, you know, giving them money that was forced to be for some, some good. You know, they're so behind in terms of the American automotive industry is so behind in terms of creating, uh, economically, uh, e- economically viable and, uh, globally friendly vehicles. I mean, they've been one of the biggest, uh, enemies of of that whole movement worldwide. Well, I, you know what? I, I don't blame companies for producing products people want. I don't hate cigarette companies. I don't hate companies that build casinos and play on people's addiction to gambling. You know what? If something's legal and it's available, right. everybody right. has a right. There's no such thing as a car company being an enemy of anybody. Because if there's people buying their products, your enemies are the people buying the products, right. not buying the company. The product. No, I, I get that. Uh, I do think that they could... They could uh, they could take uh, some sort of conscious effort. Some Their sort of job money. is to make money. That's true. That's you know, true. if they spent more time worrying about making money and less time worrying about doing, quote, unquote, the right thing, they wouldn't be in this position. Uh, I think that's questionable. But I'm, I know no, you really... you're, you're going you're gonna to probably slam me as soon as I start to argue with you. But I love your show. I love your show. Well, so what are you like... afraid of? You're afraid to have a conversation about this? No, 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 no. I'm not afraid to have a conversation. I Sounds just like that... you're afraid. I... I know I'm a big chicken. I think that people should just take more, uh, more of a moral stance. But it's not the job of corporations to ever take a moral stance. It's their job to make money. That's their sure. job. If if you want to take a moral stance, don't buy products that you feel harm the planet. That's your responsibility. But companies, as long as they're making legally available products, they're not the enemy of anybody. Right. Then I guess it, then I guess it, the moral question falls to government. Then that it should be illegal to to uh, to stand in the way of uh, of things that are uh, good. It should be illegal to stand in the way of things that are good. <laughs> yeah, you have a very interesting uh, point of view about uh, corporate America that I don't subscribe to. Our email address. It's my name. It's Tom. At blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.